start it. Got it. And thank you for joining everybody from different zones. Is it recording? Yes, Somebody's... it definitely is, John Mark. I can confirm it's recording. Okay, good. So good evening, good day, good morning, uh, everybody. Thank you for joining this edition of the Google Summer of Code uh, office hour. Office hour means that we meet uh, every two week or every week to just discuss and answer whatever question you have related to the Google Summer of Code program uh, managed by uh, the Jenkins. So let's quickly walk through uh, the agenda. Uh, the first thing, and I can immediately jump in it, so I'm happy and proud to say that the Jenkins uh, project has been officially accepted as part of the Google Summer of Code 2022 as a mentoring organization. So that means that all the preparation work that we started uh, in February can now continue and go on and we can uh, even go higher uh, in the revolutions and the RPM and start kicking the engine to get going. So um, the first item we'll do is open up on any questions that uh, potential contributors have. Uh, I've, I've seen some conversation yesterday's on the Gitter channel, so this will be open. Uh, don't forget that if you want to use this channel as efficiently as possible, you can always submit your questions directly in this document as comments or mention your question in the Gitter channel and say, I would like this discussed in depth uh, during the office hour. I want to add um, and to remind of what are the upcoming dates, what is the schedule uh, in front of us, what are the important uh, milestone. Uh, I would like to do at the end a refresh or answer any questions that would uh, still be open or doubts uh, related to how to proceed to create your uh, um, submission and how to do it practically. Uh, there was a very good demo uh, done last week on the recording, but we'll come back to that. So opening to um, the, the floor to whoever is here, what are your questions? My first question is, it is possible to bring a new uh, ideas or are these ideas fixed for the 2022 Google Summer of Code? The, the answer to that question is two no's. <laughs> so, or yes, depends, depends. Uh, I shouldn't do too much fun about that. So the first one is it's not closed uh, at all. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we still have time. Uh, we are not limited to the existing project ideas that are uh, registered. Um, you can add yours and there is some indication that I can eventually walk you through or remind you how to do it described in the various documents. Uh, um, uh, it needs to be registered. I, 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 I... I read it just now. There is some uh, dot, uh, dot R file to create and whatever. It, it is clarified there. But the first of my question was, it is, it is frozen so you, for now or not? No, you still can go on. The, the end date, I think further than that uh, would not go is when all the submissions are uh, registered. So this is end April. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, so you have one month to uh, to create your project, discuss it, have it give it substance, prepare your your submission uh, on that, and have it discussed by the the community. 
So it's not too late. Uh, and yes, go ahead. If you're you're you can enter and you're you meet the requirements, let's do it. Okay, great. Are there other questions? I have a doubt regarding the uh, automatic Git uh, caching maintenance thing. So basically, uh, yeah, I've gone through the entire, uh, uh, you know, Git maintenance uh, uh, thing on the Git SCM website, okay? And then uh, after that, I thought we are going to implement it via the CLI, okay? But then uh, Mark stated it uh, in the chat that uh, we won't be uh, using the CLI uh, version. We'll be have to uh, we'll have to be coding it, okay? So I am not sure like what is the exact architecture. How are we going to proceed with it? What are the things which are uh, you know the user requirements? That that thing I'm having a bit con uh, like I'm a bit confused about it. Good question, uh, John Mark. You okay if I answer? Yeah, sure. I just wanted to. <laughs> okay, so so my my assumption is that we would use command line Git to perform the operations because it's the most reliable and it's the reference implementation for all Git operations in the Git plugin. So if we need to do a garbage collection, we would call Git GC. If we need to do a a repack, we might make a call to do repack specifically. If we need to do a fetch, we would call command line gits git fetch. Now, does that address your fundamental question, Hushikesh, or have I missed but, something? Yeah, but then you stated that you know we are we have to support CentOS seven and then Ubuntu eighteen. Uh, so that uh, so they basically, I think that Git version was something. We just lost you to muting, Rishikesh, but maybe I can answer to your question, even making assumptions. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I, 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 I didn't get you. Can you repeat? So, so we lost your sound. You, you asked, okay. the question you asked seemed to be, um, hey, since we can't use the Git, since we need to support old versions of command line Git. Yeah, yeah. as we actually, you stated that we have to support CentOS Ubuntu 18, uh, right. Ubuntu version 18. So basically that, uh, so in those operating systems, uh, by default, it doesn't support Git maintenance. Okay. Uh, so regarding that, I have an, uh, have an issue, like how are we going to implement that uh, are we going to use like alternatives for that or like, yeah, so how are we going to proceed? Most of the operations that are implemented in Git 2.30 and later as Git maintenance are actually can be expressed with more fundamental Git commands in the earlier versions of Git. So what has to be done is identify which maintenance operations we want to do and how we express those maintenance operations as fundamental Git commands that will work with a specific those specific Git versions. So for example, Git maintenance to schedule GC can be done just by a Jenkins conceptually by a Jenkins cron schedule or a scheduled task that performs calls the command Git GC. So because of that, we can support those old, old environments even though they don't provide the git maintenance command, they do provide the other baseline commands. And one of the important explorations is to be assured that we get what we want out of calling git GC. So does, does that answer your question, Trushikesh? So basically it's like a git maintenance is built over, or, you know, the previous uh, fun uh, you know, functionalities of git and we are going to use those functionalities only to build the exact Git maintenance. Correct. It, it's that in order to do the maintenance operations, we will use foundational Git commands that have been there for a very long time. Now, part of the exploration may discover that command line Git 1.8, which is still bundled with CentOS 7, is so old it doesn't have certain operations. And in that case, then we would have to show the user on the UI this operation is not available because the Git version you're using can't do it. We've had that with sub modules, for instance. We've had that with some other things where the plugin 
has to tell the user, sorry, I can't do that because command line Git on the version you've chosen to use doesn't have the capability. And that was from, from my side also one point because maybe it should be created some switch, which one version you want to use because we use for some special reason of really all one version of the Git. And after them, I will be really not happy when the, <laughs> when the checkout plugin does not work anymore. Correct. And, and so the Git plugin actually already has logic inside of it that detects the version of command line Git that's available to it. And it can do logic based on that saying, hey, this version is new enough. I can use these new modern commands or it's older. I have to do some ugly workaround or I have to change and tell the user, I can't do this work at all because you're, command line git version is too old. Martin, does, was that sort of the, the idea you were suggesting? Yeah, or, or just make it configurable that when you start this uh, checkout function that you want to use the cache or not. But default, yes, fine. But when you does not want it, then you just use the old one things. Yeah, and this particular idea is actually not so much about checkout. And we do have a concept of different git tools in in Jenkins, so we can yep. make a Git tool that is version specific. So yeah, good suggestion. Thank you. So Hrushikesh, did we address your question, or have we? Have, is there more you would like to ask? Thank you, Mark. Uh, that has addressed my question. Uh, you okay. had also a question. Uh, if. Uh, uh, the yeah, there was another question related to the Git plugin and the Git client plugin. Okay, like, can you, uh, like, can you suggest me where to start, like, exploring from? Because I'm not getting a starter <laughs> class. Like, there are so many classes, <laughs> and I'm I'm trying my level best to keep searching, but then I'm not finding anything to start from. And so, when you when you say start from, you mean in terms of it's... a possible implementation, or no? Uh, if I, because I've been discussing and I understand the question the following way is, and it's also a general question. You discover a new plugin and you want to understand its logic and to see where is the head, where's the tail and, and where are the legs. And so where do you start? Where do you start exploring the code of a, of a plugin? So my general hint is look at the tests put some breakpoints and look what happens, but maybe you or Adrian have other tips. Well, so I was actually taking Krusha Kesher's question more as how do I explore the user experience? Uh, so, uh, okay. Krusha Kesher, can you help us understand there? No, I, it was actually uh, what, what the, uh... You, like you know it was actually based on how exactly i i start like the main function from where i everything no. starts like the main class ah okay all exploring right exploring so the java code so then yeah so then exploring the java code yeah that that's at least for me i tend to do it in a debugger i tend to do it by running the tests i tend to but pretty quickly I get bored with that and have to go using it interactively to see what the features are at the user level. So I, I'm not sure I have much good advice to offer you other than if you want to look inside the code, that's debugger and watch what it does when you make, make calls. Stepping through the code. Right. Now, you had asked a question in Gitter um, just 10 or 12 hours ago, that was, I thought, a user question. And there, I can point you to some good videos and to some, some good introductory materials, some tutorials that will let you see how users use it. Now, now that's different than the code, right? That won't introduce you to the core code in the plugin, but it will introduce you to the user concepts. And for me, those are probably as valuable for a new person starting as anything about what's inside that code. Okay, okay, Mark. I think uh, I'll uh, I'll go through those uh, links if you share it, and then try the you know the that way of exploring the Git plugin. Good for me. The 
the, the exploration of using it and realizing, oh, it does this and it thinks like that and it works like this is, is what has been the most helpful for me personally. Do you want to add more question? Uh, Hoshikesh, I'm sorry, I butchered the pronunciation of the, of the name, so I apologize for that. But do you have other questions related? That, yeah. no, 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 that those were my questions. Okay, great. I see that Vihan uh, raises hand. Vihan, you can go ahead. Uh, yes. So I had a question regarding the scope of the project of uh, pipeline step documentation generator improvements. So from what from what I understand of the project is the uh, pipeline uh, step generator repo is fetching the documentation for the pipelines and it is feeding it to Jenkins.io, uh, correct? And what this, what this project wants us to do is we want to improve how we treat that data, which is fetched, and not how we fetch the data, right? Correct. You, you understood so, exactly. Uh, yeah, sorry, is there anything sorry. about the Groovy code also? Because we have a many of the Groovy code which should be documented too. I mean, in our company, sorry. In, in this case, no, it's ex intentionally selecting from pipeline Java code and, mm -hmm. and it's the help from Java code. Vihan, back to your question, continue please. Uh, yeah, so whatever changes we would do is how we would treat that data and basically represent that in a much better way that the user can read it easily. Correct, right. So, so we believe that most, many of the problems there are related to presentation as to how does the how does the poor user consume this material? Now there's plenty of we need to, a lot more material, but with the current presentation, it has many weaknesses that are identified in that idea. Okay, so regarding that, the question I had was like, uh, for example, we make some changes to how we present the data. So won't that look odd on the Jenkins.io website because that is. Only the pipelines that documentation has been changed uh, the way we present the data, but the others are still in the similar format. Basically, I was thinking of uh, trying to put some visual aids for the user to for them to follow the links to some other pages and not just keep the data on the same page. So will that disturb the behavior of the whole website, uh, for ex the flow of the whole website? I it don't. Won't be I, uniform. Good question. I don't think it will disturb because the pipeline step doc generator continues to generate ASCII doc. Uh, it will generate a doc and that ASCII doc, it's perfectly valid for it to contain links. And, and if you're generating ASCII doc and they link to other things, that, that seems like a very helpful, helpful way to do it. And if we discover by the work on this that we should also do similar improvements elsewhere on the Jenkins.io site, that's a great outcome. That's if you, you propose an idea or a, propose a plan that is making the following changes and improvements, and we realize, oh, those are improvements we want everywhere, we will happily borrow that and put them in more places. So we would love okay. to have you find some, find a, have a plan that gives us something dramatically better there and embarrasses us about the rest of how bad other things are. Good for good, good result then. Yeah, actually, so what I was doing was like, uh, I was browsing the documentation for various different technologies, frameworks, and I was like finding which one was more visually appealing and uh, which one I found to be like easier to comprehend. So one such experience for me was studying Django. So I started in a project which was like from scratch and uh, I found the documentation to be really helpful and like most of the uh, people who would help you would directly point you out to the documentation because it was uh, very easy to read and uh, so yeah this is how i'm planning it out and perhaps uh, i hope that i would uh, come up with a nice idea for this uh, generator as well thank you i think i think that's a great that's a, a very good approach did we cover all your questions vihan uh, yes thank you thank you so much we can move on are there other questions? Yes, Mark. Uh, I would like to 
talk about automatic specification generator for Jenkins REST API. Um, and this is my first office hour. And I would like to know much about uh, this problem statement from you guys, first of all. OK, so so is it, what what I think would help then is a general overview. And, yes. and let's talk about what what the general overview is. So Jenkins has a REST API that is derived from simple annotations that developers add to their plugin source code to declare that something should be a REST API endpoint. It's got all sorts of automatically naturally created REST API endpoints. And you can see those as you start your own Jenkins and at the bottom right hand corner of the page, you'll see a hyperlink REST API and you, you can get some very fast exploration of what are the REST APIs. Every time you create something in Jenkins, there's a REST API link down at the bottom of the page to give you help to help you use that REST API. So there's a lot of REST API documentation already, but what there isn't is a, a formal description, and especially not a formal description in open API format, of those REST APIs. And, and that lack of a formal description means there's, it's also more difficult for people to consume the REST API because there are things they may not discover simply because they don't know where to navigate in the Jenkins pages. So a formal description of the REST API would have to be extracted from Jenkins and its plugins. It's somewhat similar to the, the pipeline step documentation generator that was described earlier to in response to Vihan's request is that what that thing does is it looks at all the Jenkins plugins and extracts pipeline documentation from them. What this would be doing is look at all the Jenkins plugins and extract the REST API definition from them. Uh, okay, is, after, yeah, that's pretty much clear. Huh. After extracting those APIs, we would be, you know, making use of those for uh, documentation in Swagger, right? Right. Well, yeah, yeah, in Open API, yeah. So Swagger, and if I understand correctly, Swagger and Open API are synonyms of each other. Yes. 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 Correct. Yeah, I I actually have a little hands-on experience on microservices. Um, usually in microservices, we have something called controller, service, helper, these all packages, right? But when I have um, gone through our code in Jenkins core, it's not the case. Uh, so do you have any suggestions on how to start um, with our code in Jenkins? So because I this is completely new to me. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so I think my answer is that's when you'll have to explore. I, I would not expect it. Jenkins is a, a mature application. Mature is a polite way of saying it's that its cool. source code was created 15 years ago and it has evolved over 15 years. So it was well before the concept of microservices, right? And, and so, so you're certainly correct. It won't look like current microservice-based REST APIs. Um, however, the, the crucial thing here is not to make it look like current microservices, but rather to, to document and describe what is there so that people can use it more effectively. And, and when okay. I say document, the, the awkward part there is many people think document means write documentation. In this case, it's really not write documentation. It's extract the definitions of the, of the APIs that are already there. And that has to be a programming task. Yes, yes. Um, I have actually gone through uh, Java documents. Uh, we have this website, right? Uh, Stapler. Uh, I have gone through Java docs page and I started inspecting in that, um, those URLs. Yeah, when we inspect on UI, we get the URLs, right? And um, I have gone through the code uh, and I can relate um, the packages, whatever are there in the Jenkins core and in the UI. Um, uh, are these APIs, are we going to, you know, document, uh, I mean, Swagger or are there anything different? I think the answer there is yes. We would want, we would want, 
an API document that we would want a Swagger slash open API description of all the REST APIs that Jenkins can provide with its set of plugins loaded. So I'm not sure I'm answering your question, Baru. Could you give me more clarification? Uh, probably I need to do more homework before uh, actually asking this question. Um, I'll come up for next office hour and shoot you with more questions. But okay. yeah, this actually uh, made me a bit clear. Morning, I was uh, so bewildered. I was like, am I going to do this or not? I explored and explored and I said, okay, this is not my thing probably. But right now it gave me a bit of hope at least. Yeah. So you're, and, you're, it sounds like you're on the right path. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, actually, uh, regarding this um, GCOS uh, proposal, uh, my question is, when you start a problem statement, uh, you'll start with one solution in your mind. I mean to say, before writing a proposal, I should have some idea, right? Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is my way of approach. Uh, but um, especially when you start and when you're in the middle of something, um, some things may deviate. Um, something or some other thing will come up in the middle uh, so then it is not going to be what we have started at first, right? Uh, maybe it won't be as we have mentioned in the proposal. So how would it be? Uh, it is fine to it, go. It, excellent question. Yes, it is fine. Yeah. So, so to give a very specific example, last year, we defined, we defined and accepted a project plan to do some particular improvements to the Git plugin. And we realized roughly halfway into it that we had to change the definition and it was perfectly fine. We were agreed with, discussed, did, did the, the modifications and implemented the modifi modified version. So yes, we realized that project plans do change. The, the research up front helps us reduce the volume of project change, right? And, and many times, the projects complete exactly as expected. And that says we did really good research. But if something surprises us during the execution of the project, we have full flexibility to make changes as needed. Okay, okay. Just to, to, to position the, the, the first part, the research. So as Mark stated, uh, the, the research is subject to change because you discover things in this modern uh, way of developing. Uh, the document that you're going to write is very important for us to see, did you understand the problem that we're trying to, that we are trying to solve? Do you own it? Uh, do you know what are the different pieces of it? Do you come with something positive and creative uh, to, uh, to answer it? So it's just one step uh, in the complete building process of the project, but there is an intermediate step where as we don't have place or room for every candidate, we're going to use this first analysis and study uh, to select uh, the people that will continue together with us in this adventure. Yeah, thank you both actually. Uh like coming to your question, Mark, I mean, did you understand the problem statement completely? Uh, so currently, um, there are some parts uh, from the problem statement, which I am not clear right now. Uh, so going on, um, it may take some days to completely understand and come up with a solution. Actually, time answers everything as far I know. Uh, so what my question is, um, what are the other ways of uh, talking to mentors or like whoever can help us are those only gsoc hours and gitter channel uh, or do we have no. any other calls even there well mark so, so i'm going to jump in here because it introduces the the next step uh, of it so these discussion forms as you mentioned uh, uh discourse gitter these meetings are unstructured uh, communication channels and this can help you refine uh, your ideas. The very important step that you should start now 
is start creating a draft, a work document, or, or you can make it uh, any form. And you're going to ask the community, can you please look at what I wrote? Can you comment on it? And this is also the way open source works. And this is the complete purpose of uh, Google Summer of Code is to teach the ways of open source. And a very important uh, element of that is that you, we work publicly. And that means you're going to write your ideas uh, and share them and propose them for discussion. Somebody will, will, will uh, come with, with corrections or did you think about that? Or it's this process that you should start as early as possible. Okay, is, okay. Is that clear? Yes, Mark, yeah, it's clear. Your both names are actually with Mark and Mark. And <laughs> well, <M -A> -I -C. <laughs> so John Mark, John Mark is Belgian based. Mark Waite is based in North America. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and my, my first name is with the two. So Jean Marc is the way it's, it's pronounced is, is a composite first name. Yes, so, yes. So you have it. So you have Mark and you have Jean Marc. In that yeah. case, I write always wrong name to you sorry <laughs> no problem <for> <laughs> no problem here we're slowly getting out of time uh, i have one last question um, so go yesterday... ahead if, if you i, I just going to is that a problem for the others if we continue for a couple of more minutes no no problem from my right. okay so go ahead no problem, problem. if people have to drop uh, uh, thank you all so much. Uh, so I yesterday I have actually raised a PR on JUnit migration. Um, I actually started off contributing, you know, small one by one probably. Uh, and I have seen a video on Hacktoberfest, uh, which was phenomenal. I actually loved that video. Uh, and I have seen there are, um, there can be done something more. It is actually now there's something called adoption, right? Um, so can we go on and uh, contribute um, simultaneously along with these, uh, writing oh, the proposal? Definitely. And this would add some benefit to the proposal, right? To the you... proposal, to the community, to the product. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you have the time for, please do it and we're there to help you. Uh, Aru, I'm, I'm going to rephrase your question. So, and I'm going to cheat rephrasing your question. I think what you asked is, may I adopt the plugin? And the answer yes, is, yes. the answer to that question is an unequivocal yes. Now, in the case of this specific example, I, it's not immediately clear to me how adopting a plugin will help you, but it's certainly in on this specific example, but it will certainly help you understand how the community interacts. It will under, help you understand what it means to release a version of a plugin, to merge pull yep. requests, those are all good things to learn. So, so no dispute that adopting a plugin, I'm not sure how the REST API specification generator will directly be assisted by that. So, so just to be sure I set your expectations fairly, I love the idea of adopting a plugin. It's a great technique to learn. Yep. It's a, a, a great way to contribute and to experience for yourself what it means to do coding in an open source project. Oh, wow, wonderful. Mark, I am going to start with, um, you know, uh, running Jenkins in my uh, locally so that I would understand um, exactly right for my problem statement to start with automatic specification generator for Jenkins. Yeah, good. Very this is good. generally yeah. the path that we recommend that was also described in some documents. So first run a local uh, Jenkins instance, get familiar uh, with it. Uh, start study the problem statement, explore and uh, explore the product and the various plugins and start to interact with the community. So you need to be familiar with PRs, who is doing what, uh, uh, how it all works together. And this is all this, this learning process uh, uh, you are in uh, and they oh. should now work during the, the month of April. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's all uh, I have. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just going to cover the two last points. I'm sorry if there are still open questions. Uh, we'll have to push them for another session because I'm, I'm respectful of everybody's time uh, here. Uh, the things that I want to remind everybody is so the timeline, so what is coming next is described in the link that I'm showing here in the screen share. The next important, so the next phase where, and we're started, uh, started March 7, is that the contributors start to discuss the applications ideas with the mentoring organization. This is what we're doing currently. As we said during the conversation before, this is done by the interactive channels, uh, uh, discourse, so community.jenkins.io, Gitter channel, these meetings here, and a very important mean for in is start writing ideas, uh, start to flesh or to flesh out the uh, if this is the correct expression, uh, your project, what you want to do, and make the community interact with it. Get ideas, get correction for that. This is really what you should uh, focus on. The deadline uh, for that is. Uh, well, the, the intermediate deadline set from uh, April 4th, this is when you start um, uh, submitting your applications on the Google uh, uh, system to declare uh, your, um, uh, your application. And normally, if I remember well, uh, the deadline for ending uh, the application, so the final deadline is somewhere end April. If I remember well, it's, I didn't write it here, but in my memory, it's not good anymore. But uh, in the link is 19 April. 19 April. Okay, yep. wonderful. Good. <laughs> uh, so um, this is important. Start working uh, and interact with the community on your proposal. Um, there was so, how do you do the application proposal? Um, this was extensively discussed in last week's uh, uh, office hour um, uh, edition. Mark made a demo. We're completely out of time here. Uh, we can revisit uh, it the next EMEA or Europe uh, Asia uh, uh, office hour in two weeks, or uh, watch carefully the, the recording from the March 4 edition where Mark uh, made the, uh, the demonstration. A, a strong reminder, don't try to edit the template and it's no need to request editing uh, request for it. So you need to duplicate the template. Oh yeah, that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it, it had... It happens to, to everybody, but it's just yeah, okay. uh, a reminder. So, so you need to copy and duplicate. You need to discover how the, the tool works if you're not yeah. familiar. Are there questions on those two last topics? Because we will have to wrap up. Thanks, no Chris Stern, questions? for joining at this hour of the night or the early morning. This, and. Yeah taking so careful and well-made notes so that I could concentrate on the conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah, okay. Chris, for your, for your help. I thank you all for attending this uh, session, making it uh, interestingly uh, interactive uh, and wish you good luck and uh, good work and meet you then on Gitter or other uh, channels. So I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you all.